everyone, this is Stefana Muller, your product manager for CA Service Virtualization. Today I'm going to show you some of the new features in CA Service Virtualization 8.0. The first feature I'm going to go through is our new recorder in the dev test portal. So let me log in here and get you started. Once you log into this new dev test portal, you'll see a landing page for all of your users where they'll see getting started text, quick links to the functionality that they use most, and some help information. In addition to that, we have our statistics about the overall usage of the tool and statistics about you know, our test coverage and maybe even your application insight. For today's demo, I'm going to focus on creating a virtual service via recording. There are many ways to create a virtual service, as you probably know from your previous experience with service virtualization. Um, this is just one of the ways where you have a live service running in the background, you want to create a virtual service for future use, and, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. My live service in the background is a banking application, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But before I get started, um, the quickest way for you to start a recording is to simply st state a name for the recording. I'm going to call it Bank 3. And as soon as you put a name in, a port is reserved for you to start the recording on. And that allows you to just simply point to where you want to record and start the recording. I'm going to hit the Start Recording button. And as I do that, I'm also going to pull up my banking kiosk. As you can see here, this is my banking kiosk. Behind this is a JBoss server that I'm going to be recording interactions with. Um, my recording is happening over port 34792, as you can see in the recorder. And what I'm going to do is just change to port 34792 so that I can record that traffic. Okay, so now I'm logged in, the recording is started. I'm going to actually log into the kiosk to hit the back end. As I log in, um, I can see over on the right side of my screen that my transaction count came up. I went up one. It captured the login, and if I hit checking and deposit money into my checking account, it's going to capture another transaction. As you can see, it's now two. If I go and do a balance check or maybe even a transfer into my savings account, all of that uh, gets captured by the recorder. So now I'm done, and I just simply recorded five transactions just so that we can demonstrate the functionality of the recorder and the creation of a virtual service. I'm going to stop the recording now, and as you can see here in this recording screen, everything is pretty much straightforward. First you record, then you configure, then you save. I'm in the configuration screen, and here you can see that SOAP was detected in my recording. So knowing that protocol was detected, I'm going to update the transaction view. And as you can see, um, here under the transactions, all my operations were updated to something more readable, which is very helpful, especially when you're trying to make sure that you captured the right information. If you didn't capture the right information, you actually can go back and continue recording. Um, alternatively, in this scenario, I've captured what I needed, so I'm going to move forward. And now is the last step. The last step is to be able to save and close, save and deploy your virtual service, or save and edit the virtual service. I'm going to save and deploy because that's the quickest way to get this virtual service out there for me to use. I'm actually choosing a group tag of dev. That's a, a group that I already have out on the server and that'll help me categorize my virtual services a little better. And if I click the Save button, my Bank 3 actually goes out, saves, and also deploys. There's two different areas where this virtual service just um, now resides. One is the within the project. As you can see, Bank 3 is now here, and I can open it up, and I can see the service image and see what I captured. Um, alternatively, you can go into the Dev Test Console Running. So I'm going to select my VSC, and you can see that Bank 3 is now running. I can actually point my front-end uh, UI over to Bank 3 and, and start uh, you know, transacting, which is great. It's been running for about 46 seconds here. Okay, so those are the two areas you can see your virtual service running um, or available to you. And now I'm going to go into the demo of how to edit a virtual service. So now that you see this virtual service 
you know, running, um, you may say, oops, I forgot to add a transaction or two in my recording. Or maybe there is a transaction that you want to add to the virtual service that doesn't exist on the live system today. And you have a set of request response pairs that you want to add into the virtual service. So what you can do is you open up your virtual service from the left navigation here under the Manage menu. You're going to manage your virtual service, Bank 3. I'm actually going to do a few things here and show you some of the features of this new user interface. In this uh, UI, you open your virtual service and you see if, uh, a few things. You see your stateless signature list, so all the different signatures. You see your specifics. So say, for instance, there is a multiple things happen. Say I deposited money and I deposited initially $100 and maybe then I deposited $20. Uh, then you would see multiple specifics under here. Right now I've only deposited 100 so that's what you see. You'll also see that under the same screen I can see the specifics and the response. So my request and response is all in one view, uh, allowing you to kind of make a quick compare and not have to scroll to do two different screens to see that information. In addition to that, um, we just, I gave you that scenario of where I forgot to record something or maybe I forgot to add something that wasn't on my live service. So I'm going to go, going to go in and add a set of request response pairs. And as it opens up, I'm actually going to drag over a few files that I have on my machine right now. And I'm going to drag them over and drop them into here. You could also select like a file selection menu, uh, but the drag and drop is kind of interesting and helpful, especially when you don't want to change your screen. I'm going to click done now that the transactions have been loaded. And what you'll see is that my request and response added two new transactions. Now, say for instance, I came in here later on in the day and I said, oh darn, where was that new transaction I added? I need to go and edit it. I need to add something in there. I need to edit the response, maybe. Um, how do I get to it? One of the quickest ways you can do that, if you have a long list of stateless signatures, which is the typical case um, in a service image, is that you'd go into the Find the Match by Request. Now, you see Pay Action to Request. I'm going to search for that one, because that's the one I can't remember what the response looked like. Again, these are just samples, a sample of what you could do. So as I drag that request in, it actually searches the virtual service image and it says, hey, I found it. I found it in two locations. First, I found it in a signature and I found a match in specific. Which one did you want to go to? I'm going to go to the stateless signature and it pops up and it shows you exactly where you're going. So I didn't have to search through this left navigation, which could be thousands of transactions to find that specific transaction. We have some other cool features in the search that I, I find helpful. Um, say, for instance, you wanted to find some information in the response. You're looking for the term account, and you knew it's somewhere. Um, so you click on it, and if you click on it in the search, it'll actually drive you right into the response data where account is located. It will highlight it in yellow, as you can see on the right side of my screen. That allows you to really go in, and if you wanted to change account to something else, you can do that right here. So in addition to the search, we've also added some functionality and you know, you can drag and drop and move things around. You can also add a note. For instance, um, say you had two deposit money transactions and you wanted to add a note to say, this is, this is my deposit for use case one. So for instance, you're trying to test out a specific use case, you might want to highlight that and, and highlight it for your team. Say, for instance, they come back in and want to use the same service image, they might want to know which one has the right response for use case one. Same thing happens not only on the stateless signature side, but within the specifics. Remember before I gave you the example that there could be multiple specifics, a deposit of $100 and a deposit of 20 um, so here I can say, and here I can remove the name deposit money and say $100 deposit. Now, as you see, the annotation stays, but my operation stays as well. So I didn't delete the operation. You're still able to see the operation there, um, but you do see my note as a primary uh, item on the top of the list.
the one uh, cool thing about annotations in this new release is that you not only can annotate, but you can search for those annotations. So if I searched for 100, I would be able to get to that specific data in the deposit money transaction. There's some other things that I'd like to share with you as well, and I'm actually going to go and open up a, an existing service image called Kiosk V5. And Kiosk V5 is our old Kiosk app, application. It's the same recording from uh, years ago, uh, but one cool thing about it is it has a conversation or a stateful uh, transaction represented. I'm going to select the conversation view at the top, and you can see now the conversation view is visible to me, and I can see you know, where you start, where you get the new token to log in, withdraw money, deposit, get account, and so on. Uh, there's a few features in this UI. One is that you can zoom in and zoom out, and the other is you can show an outline. So say, for instance, this image is very large or the transaction, the list is very large, you can scroll around the list using this small outline screen on the right side of the screen. You can also expand it to make it very large, or you can make it small again. As you select the nodes here, they reflect on the bottom of the screen, allowing you to see more detail, including the full list of um, signatures and the full list of response data. Okay, well that was the basics that you can see in the new user interface as well as the service image editor. There's a lot more features in here I did not go through today. Of course, I'd love for you to give us some feedback on them. Uh, please let me know what you think by commenting on this video and we'll be happy to give you some, some insight into our future release. Thank you so much.